needs to become, looking at the strengths and the shortcomings, having identified these opportunities, these things that really represent opportunities for this institution, what then are major barriers or threats that stand in the way? Barriers, roadblocks, dangers, constraints, and most importantly, self-imposed limitations things that you just kind of think you can't do, but maybe in fact you could do. No more than three, okay? And this is what you said yesterday. That's what you heard, and, uh, and uh, no one said you couldn't go out and get $50 million from industry. Well, yes, sir. Thank you. 
warned the U.S. of that particular time. BPMI will be pushed in. Most of them thought it was a little bit. They'll do spell check and they'll have to go to when they meet over. They'll have to go then when they meet B. And if someone who doesn't know this, it's a major, major rewrite. Okay, anyone uh, need uh, more time? Okay. Now, now, the card you have just written on institutional priorities tends to focus on the way you do business, the things that you need to do internally to carry out the mission. Now we're asking you to think about major institutional goals that you communicate to the outside world. Major institutional goals that you communicate to the outside world. For example, marketing might be an institutional priority. You don't go to the state region and say, that's our long-term goal. You say our long-term goal is to increase enrollment or whatever. Okay. All right, this is what you said yesterday. No more than three. Put holes at the top of your car. Just need one more. Yeah. One more? I've only got two left. 
institution in the state because we have advancing technologies and and this is what happens to the state as a result. What are those key result areas that you're willing to be held accountable and want to be evaluated on and for which you will keep data, right Joan? Great, okay. Now, this is what you said yesterday. Okay, let me, uh, let 
me try to give you a sense of, uh, of uh, where we are and to try to uh, help you begin to think and visualize this strategic plan uh, that will be the written document uh, that will iterate two or three times probably with main campus and with uh, the uh, state regions. Uh, with employer groups and internal faculty staff, things of that sort. And so you can begin to see the outline. Uh, I think probably we're thinking about no more than a dozen major goals, uh, which says something about the, the level of the, uh, of the goal. And uh, what I'd like to do then would be just to uh, share with you uh, some uh, guidelines that uh, need to be observed uh, in the uh, evolution of the um, of the plan, and uh, these are kind of principles or guidelines that uh, we need to think about as we further refine our thinking and begin to get into written form what this plan is going to, uh, to look like. And uh, so uh, guidelines uh, for strategic planning, and then this is what a strategic plan should do. One, it's the, it's the base document. It's the base document that projects your needs and your intentions for the foreseeable future. And here we're talking about a five to 10 year rollout. And we've talked about goals, and then under goals will be what we would call enabling objectives, the, the shorter term things that you're going to do to deliver on the longer term goal. It sets forth directions uh, to which the institution is committed and again, it's not a prediction of what you think is going to happen, but rather uh, what you're committed to make happen. This says this is what we're committed to. And part of that commitment is what we're willing to be evaluated on. Okay? Next, if it's effective, it needs to be comprehensive, long-range, participative, <coughs> and ongoing. President Camel talked about the need to constantly revise, update, and fine-tune the plan. Sets forth major goals, clarifies how you're going to do it, assigns responsibility, and with responsibility is resources, and determines how the results will be made. Okay? Addresses the financial implication, and the key point, that the absolute key point in the uh, Regents plan is the idea that planning goals drive resource allocation. The key point is quality, but another key point is this issue that planning goals drive resource allocation. If this is what we're going to do, we're going to get money behind it. Okay, and next is it represent it uh, recognizes the uh, if we uh, just cut this like my like uh, I don't want to oh, okay turn those on George and maybe the others off yeah, okay and then turn can you turn the spots back on those, those are heat okay and again they're like heat yeah well it's getting a little chilly <laughs> It recognizes the interdependence of education with George these other uh, uh, trends. And hopefully we've done that with our contextual <coughs> analysis. Okay, uh, the urgent need for lifelong learning needs to be built into the, uh, the plan. The uh, points that were made by all three panelists last night in terms of, uh, <coughs> of uh, cultural diversity, 
plan provides uh, stability and uh, continuity, a sense of direction and purpose while pursuing quality, relevance to the labor market, and productivity, organizational efficiency and effectiveness. Need for essential staff development that human resource development of the institutional staff is critical to uh, carrying out the plan. The plan is the common vision. The plan becomes the common vision, the shared vision within the institution and therefore enables decentralization and empowering, if you please, individual units to pursue their tasks and goals and improve the quality of service. The plan must deal with choices, establish priorities, <coughs> and uh, select appropriate policy options to achieve the goal. Remember we said that planning essentially was choice. Picking out from all the things you could do, those things that you most need to do, and again, the plan should be coherent. In federal policy, we subsidize farmers to grow tobacco, and we pay the Surgeon General to tell them not to smoke. Okay? That's not coherent. And so as we look at this plan, it needs to be coherent with all elements supporting central goals and themes. Okay? Finally, the plan needs to be sufficiently detailed that it gives a sense of direction and purpose to subordinate units and that annual goals, annual budgets, annual performance measures can be established. To further clarify the role of board, administration, uh, advisory groups, basis for monitoring institutional needs, accomplishments, and accountability. And again, what, what are you going to do into the right field stand? And then the other is that, as President Camel emphasized several times last night, the planning is dynamic, that you are constantly factoring in uh, new uh, dimensions and revising in light of needs and accomplishments. For example, let's say you really put a push on retention and that you dramatically turn that around, get in place ongoing systems and all that uh, that uh, make a difference, you may be able to roll those resources over or to turn some institutional energy and attention to uh, other, uh, other concerns. So as you think about uh, the evolution of the uh, written plan, as you think about uh, putting in place uh, some of the uh, points that we've been discussing here uh, this morning, these are some of the guidelines that uh, hopefully will be useful to you in the evolution and refinement of the actual written document. Okay, let's take a 15-minute break, and we'll come back, and I want to look at the
All right, let, uh, let me uh, kind of tell you where I think we are and how we can uh, proceed. One, uh, we want to share with you the inputs from the Alliance meeting about uh, three weeks ago uh, on many of these same questions. And uh, by and large, they are similar, I think, perhaps with one major exception. I want to see if you can detect what that major exception is in terms of relative priority of development. The other is to remind you that two or three of the members of the Alliance were not there that we had much less time with them and that what we are sharing will, will be only one cut. They didn't get to go back and, and do it uh, uh, twice. Then we uh, want to call up three key categories that you have just put in. One is to look at institutional priorities. Second is major goals. And the third is the matter of key measures or outcomes. And then uh, we would like to break you into small groups and have you work on those three categories until lunch. And then after lunch, we'll reconvene and hear back from you on those key categories. <coughs> we, we want you to come up with no more than 10 institutional priorities and no more than 10 major goals, and uh, probably no more than five key measures. So you're going to have to be selective, and, you're go and particularly on the goals, to, to think in terms of longer range, durable, persistent goals that would guide institutional energy, resource allocation, and all over the next uh, five to ten years. Okay, with that, let me ask uh, Linda to uh, share with you what the uh, Alliance has to say and, uh, and uh, see if you can detect what I think is one major difference. As Dr. Taylor mentioned, when we met with the Alliance, you uh, think of the membership. We have about 20 on the Alliance now, but of that 20, there were only 10 in attendance that day. Uh, of the 10, the majority of them had been on campus several times, but keep in mind we had two brand new individuals there for the very first time at the Alliance, and they had only been on campus maybe one or two times for some reason previous to that. So. So some of them were fairly knowledgeable about our campus and some uh, were pretty new. We asked them what are two major implications for this campus. And overall, uh, the majority of them came out with minorities. The problem of the workforce that they needed, the recruitment that was necessary, the assistance that they must give and that we must give to minorities. And particularly they stressed that anytime you work with government contracts, Minorities had to be represented. They just there was a critical need of minorities in industry, and they looked to us as the area from which they could gain or hire their employees. And we've got to have minorities to provide them as well. So that that impacts many things, including recruit, recruitment and retention. So four votes for minorities, three votes for quality very pleased that they also wanted it to continue. Uh, an implication they thought was the limited quantity of quality programs on campus. Uh, that you could look at that a couple different ways. It was complimentary, but they, they just wanted quality programs. They were concerned about the dropouts, the neglected majority, of course, uh, that were not coming in to get any kind of training, any kind of education. They were concerned about um, not only students, but whatever age of learner that was out there being able to be prepared for the workforce. In other words, have some kind of technical training that, uh, again, industry is spending billions of dollars per year on training and retraining and um, provide assistance. 
Massachusetts for high support. Uh, each getting one vote, they were concerned about the aging workforce, the competition for the college-bound student, uh, the industry partnerships they could develop, productivity in their own um, organizations. They were concerned about the retraining of the workforce. They were concerned about us being able to recruit high-notch instructors because, of course, they wanted them for their own business, but they wanted us to have them to train the potential students they would hire. And um, some of these, again, we didn't do a second cut, and they overlapped a little bit, but they were concerned about the remedial assistance programs that we could provide. You know, if I could just comment, what she is presenting is the way those were coded into the machine hurriedly. And, uh, and four were minorities, but I would also point out that two were dropout and neglected majority, which would bring four to six, and the other one on remedial assistance essentially brings it to seven, which is seven, then three. Overwhelmingly, the at-risk population. Were they concerned, Linda, when you say they're concerned about a remedial program, were they concerned that you weren't providing enough or that we needed to provide them? Or, you know, uh, that we, we need to, we are providing, we need to continue to provide remedial programs because we understand this neglected majority, the untrained, the underprepared, the at-risk students must come in. They're going to have to get the training somewhere. Two-year schools in Oklahoma have been delegated the responsibility of remedial uh, assistance. Uh, like stay at it, but do more. <clears throat> Some of these categories clustered better, and this next one did. The two major implications for employers. Over half the answers said there was a limited number of well-trained employees from which to draw. They were concerned about the available, uh, clustered in that, the, the availability of what they call the broad tech technician. In other words, as we talk about some of the interdepartmental uh, skills, some of the broad-based technologies around campus, uh, they were concerned about the educational learning levels of some of these students, uh, obviously the retirement of their own employees, uh, the retention of good employees, all those things. Their major concern is having the number of, of well-trained employees that the organization needs to continue. Um, second to that, uh, the first one received eight votes. The second one receiving four votes. Continuing education in the workforce. And that may mean on-site, there, on-site here, short course, specialized course. Uh, it ran the gamut, but they needed the continuing education, of course, of the workers they already had. They again talked about quality, education industry partnerships, ability to be flexible, and of course the increasing global competition. But those were their, their major concerns as an employer. <coughs> On exercise three, Dr. Taylor said, after some discussion, you were keen, what two public policy changes would you like to see? This is interesting. Um, they talked about reducing, uh, again, getting four votes, reducing the course and program duplication among the state colleges, and particularly some of the course program duplication at OU and OSU. Um, also tied at that was national standards for education, meaning some of the, the public education policies, uh, a revamping or an overhaul of the complete education system, overwhelming desire to have programs to reduce dropouts, early childhood education, um, lofty goals. Receiving two votes. When you talk about elimination of duplication in other institutions of higher learning, are you talking about technical duplication or duplication of the same thing we're teaching or are you talking about duplication of other areas? Were they that broad or were they Everything. Yeah. I, I mean, what they were saying is consistent with what the uh, state regions were saying last night. That we need to try to get more specialization and more uniqueness among institutions. Not to... They specifically said that they 
There was one vote that specifically said OU and OSU, because I remember that's why we went ahead and put kind of a little comment underneath this. They talked about program duplication, uh, and I think at least to our sense, if you could use the automotive as the example or something, that a number of the uh, two-year colleges around the state may have automotive programs. Some of a very uh, fairly high level, some practically non-existent, but they're still on the books. And uh, they were kind of looking at a cleanup of some of those kinds of programs. They're, of course, interested in welfare dependency reduction. Uh, they were talking about strengthening the mission admission standards which is interesting when they start, start talking about strengthening admission standards, but then the remediation and the at-risk. Uh, they were concerned about the cost of financing higher education. In other words, uh, you've got to get some students into your programs, and yet cost is a real problem. Again, child, early childhood education, the increase of student financial aid, uh, to, uh, maybe a, a longer school year in the public sector. Emphasis again on international education and uh, just a technical knowledge based training is what they'd like to more, more apply to they said they'd like to say. Okay? Okay, that gives you a little sense of what uh, they saw as major priorities and problems. We also had input oh, from them on. Uh, and mission and some of the other elements and we'll uh, we'll have those to share with you at our next meeting on the, uh, on the campus but uh, uh, clearly there <coughs> is I think a difference in the relative priority that employers are putting on to the at-risk and the minority group than surface here and I haven't seen your your, your, your new set of, uh, of uh, priorities now what we'd like to do what we would like to do would be to share with you what you uh, uh, said on the second go-round on three, uh, three key categories. One, institutional priorities. How the institution goes about carrying out its missions. What it's going to have to do in terms of kind of inside priorities. And then we'll call up major goals which are the goals you set on the table at the state regents office and with employers and so on, and then look at what you have to say on key majors, and then we will break up into uh, subgroups and uh, ask you to try to refine that list and get some agreement on 10 uh, priorities, 10 uh, goals, and five uh, majors. Okay, uh, this is what you have to say on the matter of institutional priorities. Uh, you may want to just jot those down as kind of inputs uh, going into your group. Um, the, the other point I would make is uh, in a way, retention and enrollment speak to the same problem of student number. Recruit more, keep more. Get them finished. <coughs> Can you throw all those up there with marketing also? Retention and recruitment? Uh, sure. The enrollment? Well, retention is not maybe not necessarily a marketing uh, uh, dimension, but uh, yeah, but but marketing is uh, I think more than <coughs> recruitment. I think it's image building. I think it's conveying results. It's uh, yeah. But to put it differently, is anything you want it to be. You're the ones got to live with it.
I'm, I'm wondering, so we've kind of changed the agenda. I'm wondering if we would throw them off, if we just let people take their own lunch out here and not have them set up a lunch. Thanks, George. Uh, probably out of contact. Okay. And if it's not possible, we'll have them set up. Because we've done the alliance presentation that we we're going to do over lunch already. If that's a problem, we'll go ahead and have them set up. All right. But if it is, we'll If not, we'll just launch we'll out. We'll just launch out there and okay. sign We've already checked out our rooms. Uh, if you've already checked out, out of your room, uh, and we do that, everybody just sign uh, room 142. <laughs> Bars open. Bars open. And I'll go check. That's what we've done. Where we said you've been doing that anyway. Uh, let's see. I wanted to tell you, some of you asked about uh, if you... What we'd like to do is to uh, go back and uh, share with you your input this morning on the mission, the strengths, the, the barriers, etc., and then pick up the work that you've done in the groups on uh, priorities, goals, and uh, results uh, in the general sequence. And uh, we will ask each group to uh, comment, and we have the we have them in the computer. And we, uh, they can be on the screen, and we'll ask each group to comment on their priorities and go across all groups' priorities. Then we'll call up uh, goals, and each group can comment on their goals, and we'll, then we'll go results. The other we would like to uh, cycle after that one more time on the institutional label or identifier, kind of the, the code word, the shorthand, uh, that uh, would be it would be helpful and let me again reinforce on that point we are not talking about renaming the institution we're talking about the identifier the code word the, the label the shorthand that people tend to use in uh, in, uh, in defining it then we'd like to take a minute or two and chat about the uh, the uh, pre-tech uh, concept and what are some things that might uh, happen as a result of that and also the matter of the uh, support system. We've got a little additional data there on uh, on uh, our retention or dropout uh, problem. And then uh, ask Bob to give a few wrap-up uh, comments and then I guess we're on the road. Is that it, uh, Bob? Okay. All right, could we uh, call up Ben uh, Mission to see what um, what you said this morning on uh, Mission? We may need to adjust the lights.
common thread coming through there all along. Okay. Hey, a little self-interest there. <laughs> Don't believe in yourself, you will. Absolutely. tell you a story on that matter of faculty. The story goes that this uh, university had a winning football team and there were <coughs> strong innuendos and allegations that they had been fixing games and the grand jury was in panel. And uh, they uh, interviewed the coach and, and interrogated him in the grand jury. The questions were, did you or any member of the coaching staff have any known association with gamblers? No. Any team member? No. They called in the young quarterback, and they asked him, uh, to your knowledge, does any member of the coaching staff have any known association with gamblers? No. Any players? No. And suddenly the EA said, who's the best player on the team? The young quarterback swallowed and said, well, I am. The next day the coach was kidding me. He said, well, after all, coach, I was under oath. <laughs> <laughs> This one is not high. We do. It's a new emphasis. It's showing up in the literature. There's research to show that it pays off that, that initial first term uh, Still uh, uh, success. <coughs> and the other is that's where you're, you know, you're losing 40% of your. Yeah, yeah. yeah. talking about it. Uh, they're, no, they're, they're moving for it. Yeah. <coughs> okay, opportunity. one we haven't talked about much, but I really think that's an opportunity. When you look at the average age of students on your campus, it's substantially below many of the four-year schools as well as uh, as the community college. Most community colleges are 30 or older, many universities are in the upper 20s. <coughs>
That means if someone's not been on campus in five years, that we need to get them back on campus because our campus has changed significantly. Um, number eight would be recruitment and utilize some innovative methodology in our recruitment practices. Don't just rely on the high school, going to the high schools and visiting the high schools and going to college day and nights. Um, assessment and then number ten, innovative teaching techniques, utilizing our. Um, resources that we have on campus, currently have on campus, and look for new ways to teach. Okay, can we uh, move to group two now? Uh, this is a no-name group. <laughs> Check around. You can see why. Uh, and uh, we thought, uh, of course, the first priority is marketing, but as uh, subcategories for that, uh, the first thing would be to staff a marketing division with uh, adequate staff to perform the marketing, and then define the marketing and proceed from. Pardon me, define the market and proceed from there. Uh, and we categorize or we prioritize the priorities. Uh, okay. Number two was retention. Number three, recruitment enrollment. Uh, seems like those are tied closely together. Uh, if we do a good job of recruitment, we're going to have a good enrollment. If we do a good job of retention, we're going to have a good enrollment. Uh, okay. One to strengthen uh, business industry linkages. Uh, we thought uh, through uh, the things that would be uh, priorities under this would be uh, customized training, uh, specialized accreditations, uh, graduate placement, financial support. Uh, five, we recommended to establish a chief academic officer position. Uh, solve several of the problems with things such as uh, duplication of programs, other things. Six, uh, funding, and we kind of qualified that uh, yeah, with non-traditional uh, funding sources. Seven, uh, assessment. 
eight quality. Uh, we thought under quality maybe we could list some items such as uh, faculty staff upgrading, human resource development. Those were the only two I had listed there. Uh, job placement, including uh, follow-up, uh, grad placement, uh, initial, the initial placement, and then uh, assistance for those that come back seeking our help in finding jobs later on. And, okay, uh, the information infrastructure would include uh, things from uh, an LRC for Becky, uh, communications networks, uh, academic networks, online enrollment, uh, developing the whole infrastructure to support a system uh, of uh, high quality telecommunications. Electronic mail, yeah, the uh, whole communication system. Does assessment uh, kind of deal with the broad accountability issue as well? As you oh, yeah, to? yes, okay. yeah. Okay. Under assessment, that was from entry to, to exit okay. and uh, follow up. Yeah. Okay, could we move to group three? We also have my name. Um, not only that, we're confused. Um, <laughs> well, we have an operational definition because we were trying to discriminate between priorities and goals. And I think from seeing the other two groups, they didn't put the same things in the same categories. We did. So what, <clears throat> how we define that is priorities were the the uh, long-term things we wanted to do, and then our goals were the pieces how we were going to get there. So the priorities were uh, improve retention, and we have some methods for that done in our goals. Um, facilitate decision making and improve communication, uh, administratively particularly, and organization uh, over organization. Uh, improve marketing to student industry and continuing education to all several areas of marketing. Expand and further define institutional assessment. Um, do what we do now, but more and build a whole network for that. Deal with at-risk groups, especially minorities. Increase funding from grants and scholarships. Provide facilities and equipment to support the programs and provide placement. And then our goals will speak to each one of those. All right, uh, the next group. We have five <coughs> different names, all of us individuals. We are definitive as the devil. We don't agree with half of what you said. Uh, we have a tendency to think that you can prioritize anything you want to. You can prioritize your goals. You can certainly do that as far as your, uh, your end results, your key results. What we did, if we had our druthers, we would tell you to ignore that list entirely. And instead, consider items one through five, marketing, 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 and marketing. And we would be more specific by saying that we need to market in some specific areas and we need to place very high priorities on these. We need to market, first of all, to ourselves so that every one of us knows who and what we are. Here, here. We need to market to our own campus so even our students have a better concept of what we are. We need to market to the broader educational community beginning in Stillwater. We think that president of our university doesn't even know who we are. We think we ought to market to the local Okmulgee community so that we have better support there. We think we need to market to business and industry, and that ties in with the linkages concept and everything. These things are all interrelated. We need to market to our student prospects and simultaneously with the general public, because if we don't have support from the general public, we're going to be ill-perceived by the student prospects. And so marketing is really the first line. <clears throat> now when we get down to the subject of uh, uh, business and industry linkages, we're talking about uh, concepts where we have people and material mobility between our institution and between industry and businesses that we serve. We are talking about faculty exchanges as well as some of the other concepts we're talking about. Technology exchanges, sharing. We're talking about uh, also, uh, we're talking about competency and certification in this category, so we are taking on into consideration some of the other words that have been used and lumping them all into this one category. The next item that we have on our list is recruitment. 
you notice we have enrollment in the same thing because recruitment and enrollment are very much interrelated. Now we know that recruitment is one thing and enrollment can have another meaning. But on the other hand, we don't want us to consider these things separately. And we emphasize in our conversation the importance of being user friendly when we go out to do our enrollment. That uh, very often we are, well, we do a job of recruiting, but we are somewhat intimidating to people who are not familiar with the setting in which we're involved. Uh, in the area of retention, I wrote down here, if recruitment effort is properly focused, retention will go up. So we don't really separate that from the other effort either. So the next area was faculty and staff development, and we uh, decided that that includes department heads and other administration officials as well as what we normally think of as faculty and staff. Uh, ongoing programs, curricular development, so we lump program curriculum and academics into one category. And finally, we have a category called administrative efficiency, and that takes into such things, uh, into consideration such things as that uh, academic dean that keeps coming up in the mention. Uh, there was one other thing that I um, didn't mention, and neither did your point. On funding. Oh, oh, funding. Well, yes, funding is, is a priority, but we figured that funding follows from everything else. If you take care of the other things, funding will, will come along with it, particularly through the uh, linkages. The other thing that we were concerned about uh, uh, with regard to funding, uh, too, was we had a hard time deciding whether or not that actually should really go at the top of the list. And we said, no, we're beginning with an assumption here, we talked about before, that funding was going to remain for a while at the level that it is right now. So we assumed that we would begin there, work with existing programs, and then let additional funding follow. That's it. Very good. Group five? <coughs> Group five, Dr. Hall. We discussed very much the same topics as everyone else, and I don't know that I have a great deal to add. Uh, we saw marketing as a major issue and felt that uh, it needed to be not just targeted outside our institution, but within the system and within our own campus, um, that perhaps there are some things that each department has to offer that would benefit students in other departments, and we've not done a good job of, of discussing that among ourselves at this point. So we discuss it pretty much like the others in the which I've mentioned. Uh, we do feel that Developing our business and industry partnerships was vitally important to the continuation and was linked to <coughs> alternative funding being provided as well as to identifying what courses of study would be required and, and where we could place people in the, the entire realm that had to do with uh, partners in industry. We're concerned that we need to recruit more students and improve the enrollment there and to, uh, in the marketing effort, identify those sources in the non-traditional and uh, retain those that we do attract to our campus, turn our attention to those students that have been identified as at risk and since we know that we already have a, a large population of those we, really address reaching and retaining those people. Uh, we felt that the tech prep program would probably enhance that and we ought to be uh, involved in opportunity could as that developed. <clears throat> we were also discussing the placement of people and it all goes back to what others have said. I don't want to elaborate on that either. We sometimes discussing um, an academic officer. We didn't know what title to give that person, but to avoid duplications and to see that there was consistency uh, so that once a program has been described and a graduate and a program has been described that we have some clearer idea of what has prepared that individual and there were some similarities across the board. And then an emphasis on continuing education to retain it. Okay, can we go now to uh, goal? Group one. To provide the necessary support 
social support services to retain the maximum number of students. Um, that felt like that was our the primary retention goal, but it's more than just retention. It's, it's providing services so that we can, in fact, retain them. Um, create an accurate awareness in our publics. Of course, we have to define what those publics are of our institution. Develop industry sponsorship of student education. Industry is saying we need minority students. We need um, we need students trained, specific students trained in minority areas and other areas. But we need to go back to them and say, okay, let's work out some type of partnership. You pay for their education. They guarantee sign a contract to work for you for so many years. And then we are helping them meet their need. And they, in fact, are helping us recruit um, students. Increase minority student enrollment and matriculation. It's more, you know, it's not just let's get them on campus, but we've got to retain them and make sure that, that our minority students are, in fact, graduating. Increase institutional efficiency. That goes back to eliminate waste. Take care of those things that are not producing the way we want them to be producing. Establish new paradigms for foundation work. Um, we kind of kicked that around to increase foundation by 100% and decided that that may not be one of those realistic things, so we left it at uh, establish new paradigms for foundation work. Establish incentives for continuing faculty staff development. And that's more than just give more money, that is some recognition for attainment of specialized training and things like that. <coughs> Establish professional development center. <coughs> Build a new library that has greater public access countywide and explore the possibility of establishing a countywide system. Not just rely on ourselves to build that library. Um, but look at having the possibility that library having multiple uses with us being one of those multiple uses. Develop national lectureship series um, and look at something that will talk to what we are in fact doing but having this, the lectureship series on our campus. Linda, I have a question. What do you mean by it? Internally. Okay, the, the goals we thought we should establish some priorities. Uh, first, uh, one of the things we could do is guarantee job placement opportunities uh, for uh, not each graduate, but the maybe the top 25% uh, or uh, some number such as that, but uh, guaranteed job placement opportunities to increase retention, that should be a goal. Uh, establish in industry specific partnerships for each technical occupational department. Uh, increase enrollment, improve image, <coughs> improve faculty staff credentialing. Uh, okay, Tom? Yeah. All right. Current and well. Relevant instructional <laughs> instructional equipment and technology. Uh, I don't know whether to read. All, I'll read all of them. Establish uh, an institutional assessment program. Uh, provide support for at-risk groups. Provide appropriate, attractive facilities for the educational function. Questions? Comments? Discussion? <coughs> Relevant. So I don't really have to look. Could we another uh, group? Tom uh, Tommy Well. Uh, our first goal is spoke to the priority of retention, which uh, the goal then is to redesign our system of entrance placement, remediation, counseling, continued advisement, and uh, program transfer. That's what we thought was necessary for our retention. Uh, in order to do that, to facilitate decision making and improve communication, we thought we need to hire an In order to improve marketing to students, industry, and continuing education, we need to develop a marketing strategy that is unique to Oklahoma's personality and needs. It's our own. Okay. 
in order, uh, fourth one is in order to expand and further define our institutional assessment, we need to develop a system, a program, a written up uh, system for ongoing assessment, monitoring, feedback loops. Uh, in order to do our priority number five, which was to deal with at risk groups, especially minorities, we thought we should establish a separate office of minority affairs uh, and highly strengthened counseling services. Uh, number six, a priority of increased funding from grants and scholarships. We need to develop partnerships with private public groups to underwrite those scholarships and grants. Uh, so build a, build the relationships. Uh, in order to do our priority number seven, which was provide facilities and equipment to support the programs, we thought uh, one example right now is to upgrade the library. Uh, the, Last one, in order to do our priority of providing placement, we should organize the placement activities, which might include business and industry bank or, or, or employment mm -hmm. users, and or the single placement office, which um, to, to get back into the single placement office. Okay. Well, what we've all had a tendency to do is to uh, on methodologies for achieving growth. And these words all represent wonderful goals. I don't see anything in our list that contradicts anything in anybody else's list. I only see one other thing on ours that I don't see so much in the other than perhaps the economic development. Outside of that, we're all saying pretty much the same thing. This does not represent a list of priorities as far as we're concerned. What we did was to spend the majority of our time working on the first item, which were priorities, and realizing that there are several methodologies that can be used to achieve those. And so all we did was simply take the list that had been provided and list those that we considered the 10 most important uh, goals and proceed there. Just, just to uh, comment further on that, I think it might be as you begin to uh, further refine the plan, like on retention, your goal might say to uh, reduce uh, or to, to increase uh, the graduation rate from 37% right. to 65% mm -hmm. by the year 1995, exactly. something like that. And, and those are things that I think are going to have to uh, come. Good point. Yeah. Okay, can we uh, move to the next one? You see nothing new on our list either. We were pretty much in agreement with the other things that have been discussed here too. We did spend um, some amount of time talking about our participation in the economic development in our state, but perhaps we haven't um, reached those people that we need to reach, and we could do a better job and be more participating in that. In uh, just to uh, just to comment on economic development, I happened to be on a uh, uh, United Express flight from Chicago to Davenport last week, and uh, in the uh, uh, magazine on the plane uh, put out by the airline was an article on uh, industry location, and the number one criteria was a trained workforce, and two was quality of life and educational system and down the line. And I think the very fact that you're placing large numbers of people out of state, uh, in essence, needs to be called to the attention of the economic development people in Oklahoma to see if, over time, we cannot attract business into the state and provide local jobs and a tax base and ways to uh, support the system. Remember, when we started, we said that one of the very key points of the strategic plan is to help evolve a uh, common vision, shared goals, joint expectation. And as you begin to see the, the lists begin to merge and common themes and common agreement, where the real challenge is going to come is resource allocation and the ways and means of delivering on that. And how do you diffuse out into the entire institution some of the concepts and thinking and all that uh, 
are behind these uh, uh, cryptic uh, uh, gold. And uh, we do want to talk about that further today. And we invite you to think about how we get broader involvement and, and extend this shared vision, common goals, and, uh, and so on. Okay, if, uh, if you would now, would you, uh, that's, that's the word. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, these are the key measures. Any comments from group one? <coughs> um, placement of success, which is to include our continuing education of our graduates. Okay. Employer satisfaction with graduates, minority student enrollment and retention is measurably increased. Um, we want to see an increase in that. Um, increased business industry involvement with the institution that can be measured by things like increased amount of donations, money, um, increased involvement with students, possibly student sponsorship. And then this, we have an established student service center. Okay. Again, uh, we just li we've listed items uh, that we want to measure. We didn't feel like we had time to develop the really the uh, the the uh, measurement. Uh, I've lost the word that I'm looking for, but the the uh, measurements that we ought to have, the uh -huh. percentages and so forth, and just listed the things that we can measure. These are all measurable, and we just have to put the uh, correct numbers with them. Let me say I really appreciate this word attached to, to placement because the whole idea is the idea that, uh, that uh, the major purpose of this institution is to confer a labor market advantage on its graduates. And that means what is the value added in terms of wages and type of job over minimum wage. And uh, it also deals with the heart of that covenant, the quid pro quos that, uh, that need to emerge and the need over time to negotiate on behalf of your graduates for appropriate starting wage, job placement, etc. Yeah, very good. Okay, uh, group uh, three. Uh, we came up with four and two five. Uh, the these are percentages, uh, answers on surveys, just the numbers. We didn't put the numbers on either, but um, the last one might not be quite clear. The rate of improvement on student competencies. Uh, the measure, a measurement of student gain. I don't want to be judged on trying to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Okay, so that's fine. <laughs> The rate of improvement, not just how many graduate, but what you got for the so. you know, that That's going to interface also with the idea of exit competencies and verification and so on. Good, uh, good one. <coughs> Pleased to see you looking at employers as customers as well as students. Yeah, very good. Okay, group four. We like that particular point that uh, group three made as their first one, too. About satisfying both the employer and the student. But we stated it in different ways. That's up there as our second point. Mutually satisfactory placement. If it's satisfactory with the student and satisfactory with the employer, the whole thing's going to work out. Very good. Accurate perceptions were the first thing we put up there, however, because we felt it's very important for long haul that what we do and how we do it accurately perceived by our puppets. We talked about that before in the market. The rest of it uh, is pretty much in line with what the rest of you have said, and uh, we just present those five points of consideration. Ours are similar. We did discuss the uh, on the placement issue, that it be uh, mutually satisfying, as, as the other put it, and uh, that we needed to measure that placement in several different places 
ongoing, uh, longer term, and uh, there was a lot of discussion about that, that it wasn't quite fair to take statistics just uh, the week of graduation, but that those needed to be followed, and the tracking issue, of course, is <coughs> of major importance on that, otherwise you don't have any input. Um, and on graduate competencies, we, we discussed the issues of concern to all of us, and that we wanted to uh, measure the improvement and uh, to be cautious about the kinds of tools that might be used to measure those competencies. Good point. Uh, good point. The issue of longer-term follow-up, I think, is very important, and it's going to be especially important to this institution. I mean, any institution needs to do longer-term follow-up in terms of uh, persistent employment, <coughs> promotability, expanded responsibility, improved uh, salary. But it's also going to be especially important for this institution because of your 90-hour uh, degree and the need to show that that extra hours moves your graduates ahead faster because of the additional depth and, the, and all of that that is implicitly uh, inferred. And that's a burden of proof, I think, a database that you will need to uh, establish and, uh, and maintain. Well, I think clearly we see some, uh, some convergence here, some focus, some sense of uh, direction and uh, a high, uh, high level of agreement as to what the critical issues and the critical uh, uh, next steps are for the uh, for the institution. We'd like, yeah. Uh, I wanted to just comment on placement. One of the discussions our group had, and we didn't put it in, and maybe I'm filing the minority report, but maybe instead of placement, although I think placement is a, is a good thing to measure, uh, student satisfaction with the program because many non-completers actually have met their goals and leave the program perfectly satisfied yes. and there needs to be a way to measure that also yes and i think too increasingly you're going to need to try to identify the student's intention and goal at the front end <coughs> so that you're fair to yourself in terms of, uh, well, of uh, what, who is a dropout and who is a student that has completed their goal. But their goals may change. For instance, I have one that's leaving one of my apartments <coughs> that uh, has gained confidence that she can go on and do what she really wanted to do. Yeah. And we've given her that confidence. So I think we're very successful, even though it's going to reflect negatively in, in the numbers. Well, I think clearly the matter of placement and wages, persistence, employer satisfaction, student satisfaction, yeah, very good. Okay, when you uh, turn to your packet of materials, and there were two lists in there, one was the planning assumptions, and one was the planning questions. And would you carefully, carefully look at the planning assumptions and uh, see if you think uh, they are complete or that they need to be uh, that they need to be uh, reworded. If you think there's an additional assumption that uh, you uh, just subconsciously have been assuming to be true, taken for granted as you have provided your inputs and as you have tended to refine and convert your thinking, then please write that on a call. Are there any other planning assumptions that implicitly or subconsciously you've been taking for granted in this logical thinking process that we need to get that recorded? Yeah. There's been so much conversation about the image of the school. About the what? About the image of uh, the institution. Yeah. Should there not be an assumption regarding that? 
Should we not state that specifically as a problem? Well, te technically, uh, an assumption is not is not your problem list. Uh, theoretically, your your uh, planning it might well fall under a planning question, and that is. Uh, what is uh, or is the image of the uh, institution positive, correct, something like that. Uh, but the assumption is, is, a, is a significant uh, uh, kind of decision factor, uh, something that is pivotal in your thinking in establishing problems, priorities, and approaches that you assume to be true. And, and they are, for example, that the state uh, regents are supportive, that resource levels are likely to remain constant, that the way to increase resource levels are serve more students, private sector, increase tuition, that sort of thing. I accept that what you say is absolutely true, but I also think that, that because we have made such an issue, because we <coughs> talked about the way we want our institution to proceed in terms of words as well as concepts, because of the fact that it has arisen so much in discussion, even last night in the group discussion between uh, three principals who were here, excuse me, four here, <laughs> but it came up so many times that I wonder if it isn't more important than just simply a planning question. Could could very be, and if you feel that, put it on a card and uh, and uh, and feed it in, and others that that, that agree uh, do that uh, 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 clearly. Uh, you, you could assume that image is critical. I mean, and that's certainly true. And that well, that's is always true of any institution. Yeah. But, but we also, I think, must recognize that we have a critical image problem that really does need to be overcome. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, okay, if if you think there are needed uh, additional assumptions or modifications of these assumptions, please. Uh, Put them on a card and, uh, and uh, feed them in. I think maybe on our image that it's not so much that the institution has an image problem as all of technical education has an image problem of being felt like it's less than education. Yeah. I, I think we all have a feeling about technology or technical education in general, not just the institution. And I know there's a lot of misconceptions in uh, uh, what the manufacturing technology is. For this case. So I don't know that what we wouldn't want to we would want to broaden that out as a image problem for all of technical education, not just the institution, although well, true, we do if, have. If that's the case, if, if it is that, I feel better about putting it back under questions instead of assumptions because that comes to that. With uh, respect, plus, you know, there, I, I do think there, we can improve our image. Well, I only ask the question. I'm not, I'm not insisting. So, th theoretically, you can't assume a problem. You establish a problem. Mm -hmm. you, and assumptions are things that are, are, are decision rules and right. key points in, in, in writing that. Let me remind you, however, that the parent campus in this draft mission statement says science and technology. Technology is an ascending term. Ride the way. It is that. Okay, anything else? Please turn your card in, man, on assumptions. Could we look now to planning questions? And these are things that are kind of known factors that we need to take into account and uh, deal with in the planning process. Bob, did you want to comment on the one with respect to the Votech system? Well, uh, it seems to me that uh, perhaps after uh, Boyd Peters' discussion last night that uh, we might want to give some consideration to uh, uh, even a stronger statement of tie with the with, with the uh, Votech system. I just want to kind of throw that out uh, more than, uh, uh, maybe more than uh, voluntary uh, cooperation. 
with the one tech system that, that we might want to say that there are some uh, right types of interfaces uh, that uh, we should establish and that, we that I think he opened the door uh, more to those than we thought perhaps uh, was possible. I just want to put that out for, for you to think about. I wish that, uh, I'm only speaking for myself, not for anybody I've talked to, but I wish the uh, Botex superintendent felt as strongly as he does. And, and I, I'm not convinced yet that that's happened. And I want to say that because I, I'm familiar with some of the schools where we're not received as well as we are at others. Not that simple. Is a good example. They are very receptive to us and very open to us. And we've got some others that haven't been that way. And, uh, Roar may have been speaking for himself, and maybe not all of the superintendents, but I don't think that uh, attitude is prevalent among all of us who have yet. I think it, uh, let me see, I, I think your statement is partially true. I think it's not unanimous among all of them, but I think it's prevalent. But, uh, a, large, a larger percentage of it, and I think it's my feeling is it's incumbent upon us to to make it 100 percent. I feel that that's a, that's a really goal, a legitimate goal, and that, that we can reach that. But we can't we can't set back and make the government thing happen. That's why the police the right type of uh, uh, leadership and foster relationship. My feeling is we can't. Because Roy has said the same thing. I tend, not all of superintendents, but Roy says the same thing essentially to the superintendents. Okay, please uh, jot down any additional or modifications on the uh, <coughs> on the planning questions. Right, right. If you would write question, differentiate between the assumptions and questions so we have the cards. There's a card down here. There's some cards on the corner. Dorothy had to drive to Tulsa to find some cards. The real problem is we lost the formula for water. Could uh, pass any of the uh, adjustments or additions you have on planning questions down to the uh, corner, 
And let me ask you to shift your attention to one other issue that I want to uh, that I want to return to. In public relations and marketing, one of the fundamental principles is to establish a positive image. The other is to repeat important themes, to report, to repeat and reemphasize and reinforce uh, important themes, identifiers, and labels. Now, we're not talking about changing the name of the institution, but we are talking about shorthand ways, code words, significant and appropriate labels that describe you, because people are not going to say, I drove down to an advisory meeting at the, Ohio, at the Oklahoma State uh, University branch at Okmulgee. They're going to use a shorthand label. And so when we think about uh, shorthand labels, we spent a little time yesterday uh, talking about uh, labels and identifiers in terms of criteria. Broad enough to get under the tent, narrow enough to distinguish and focus, competitive vis-a-vis -vis other uh, institutions, that it's upgrading, that it's an ascending kind of word, it's future safe, it's durable, that it's acronym safe, and that it tends to convey a single focus. Now, this is what you said yesterday, and what we want is shorthand, code word, label, two, three words that would tend to reinforce and extend the official name. Yeah, actually, on the very first one, uh, McIntyre and I have to be two of the people who put something like that down, but we had, and I know you didn't want a name change, but we're talking about an identifier or something that's not hard to say, we really put down OSTI, and it doesn't appear on the list anywhere, but it, it refers to technical institute, and that's probably the, the theme or the idea that you're trying to get over. Okay. Right. But, but, but we don't want people to say down at the technical institute, we want them to say down at OSTI, if we're trying to separate ourselves. But isn't that a change for name? But, but see, you're not trying to give a, a, a name, you're trying to give a descriptor. I realize that. Yeah, and, and you know, well, but, we have, but, but we have a problem with people saying our name. And I know you weren't looking for a name change, yeah. I understand yeah. that, but we still I have to address that problem somewhere down the line. But, but think about a descriptor, a thing that describes what you are, who you are, what you stand for, what's your primary emphasis. Part of a marketing effort, so we also want something that, that differentiates or differentiates you. And that was that. We sound an awful lot about that. We're not, we're not really differentiating. But, but, but they are technical and technician, and I think you are technology. But you used to have Yeah, that's something we're going to do. Put down what you think. <laughs> you are not an institute. Now you've got to change your name to become an institute. You are a branch of a university. It, it, it's an interesting problem you raise. You know, you say we don't want to change our name, and yet find a word that we can be called by that's shorter, that's easier to understand. Well, obviously, if we shorten it to something like you know, Oak Mulgee, that's too generic, because that's the whole town. Right? If we short it to OSU, we're confused with Stillwater. Yeah. So we're back to OSU Oak Mulgee. You're, you're trying to use I know. I'm you're trying to use paradigm. a name. You're trying to use a name. I'm trying to get you to think about a descriptor. I know. And your tech. Your tech. That's right your technology. Now, that's, that's what we are right now. That's right. And that's what you'll be in the year 2000. We talked about this yesterday. Yeah. 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 But there, there are people who want to get away from that. <laughs> Which is the, the dilemma we live with, right? Why, why would you want... Let me ask you this. 
dispute. And I'm not trying to get into uh, a, a debate, but here, your parent campus has added technology to science as an ascending, value, positive, upgrading label. Technology is different than, tech, than technician. Technology is different than Votech. Technology is how America is going to compete and win in the international marketplace. Why would you not want technology? My guess is that the general public doesn't know the difference in words. You've got it. Well, that's what marketing okay. and PR is about. They don't know the difference. How would you use that word then, technology? It's too hard We're to We're going to go down to square. I, I, yeah, give, give me your example. Blue, give me your blue say. folder. No. What one is, when you get a blue folder, I would have here Oklahoma State University at Okmoge. Okay. Careers in technology, technological careers. I would I would I would reinforce technology over and over and over. Oh. We've never been known as Oklahoma Tech. Never. Officially. You go to Oklahoma City and you talk to somebody, and they know you only if you say, end up telling them finally, Oklahoma Tech. That's what they know. That's true. That's Lots of talk areas, that's what we know. Yeah. Or Votech, yeah. Well, don't let other people name you. Name yourself. Describe yourself in terms of what you are and what you want to become. When you look at your goals, your priority, it's technology, technology, technology. It's up to you. I'm just telling you how it looks from where I stand. Well, I think, too, we've got to make an effort to subtract the word Bo from the front of tech. Of course. Because that's what everybody in the state says. They've done, they've done a super job. The yeah. Okay, state. Well, a super job of marketing. Talk about career tech, careers in technology, technological careers. Associate technology with other positive words. Right. That's going to be part of the marketing is to remove the vote well, from the front And the end. other is to agree on three or four ways that you incorporate that and everybody start using it. The first day on campus I heard this institution called 25 different things. You aren't even agreed on how you're going to describe and label yourself. Oh, I go one step further. I've been on campus now for a year, and during that year, every time I started to use the word text, somebody said, ah, don't do that. <laughs> don't listen to it. Don't listen to it. Hey, hey. I didn't say you. I didn't say you. <laughs> Gary Borsch, he's not no, here. No, no, <laughs> think about it. MIT, California Institute of Technology, there are some super institutions built around technology. And technology is the more ascending term than technician or technical education. Because you want a short phrase, technology. Uh -huh. yeah, sure. Well, how would you like to work at Mississippi? Uh -huh. That's longer than technology. Uh -huh. But all of us will have a nice little identifier, like MIT, Caltech. They all have nice little identifiers. We can't do that with our hands. Why can't you call yourself tech? What can you do with our hands? Oh, tech. I will tell you. I will tell you what my per man's definition of technology is. And you need to do it for yourself. But I think technology, in essence, is the process of evolving marketable products from science. It's the process of evolving marketable products from science. You have scientific discovery that leads to marketable products. And that's what technology is about, and you are preparing people to work in technological fields. And you talk about advancing technology, that is the issue, that is the process of, of concentrating on those technologies that have the shortest 
timeline between discovery and practical, marketable applications. It's those technologies that have the higher scientific base. It's those technologies that take science to the market faster. It's those technologies that change more rapidly. And that's why you need more money, and that's why you ought to be funded more than you've got a lower division in the state. It all hangs together. Now, said all that? Is that what we do? Prepare people to work in technology? The latest. That's the goal. That's the goal. You're probably doing it in some areas. I, I would think that some of your uh, uh, automotive uh, dealer uh, uh, sponsored programs, I would think your construction and manufacturing, probably your electronic, any number, diesel, whatever. And, and that's the goal. And the thing is, you see, you want something that's future safe. You want something that is upgraded, something that you can grow and evolve, something that's going to be a word you can own and a word that you can carry into the next five and ten years. Okay, I, I stepped out of my role as a facilitator and uh, became an advocate, and it's up to you, but... Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> but, but I will tell you, within, within, within two hours on camp, Within my first two hours on campus, I sensed that you have a kind of an identity <laughs> label crisis. And your official name is too long to you. And so come up with one that is positive and meets these kinds of criteria. And I think perhaps that you need not accept what you think the current understanding or label of tech or technology is. You have to agree that it is, that's what you want to become, and you need to gear your marketing and your PR toward that. And if you don't like that one, give me a better one. Okay, you want to put an identifier down on the card and uh, turn it in, please? Uh, really treat it as brainstorming. What can we do is generate a lot of ideas. Yeah. Don't necessarily have to think about the implications of the brainstorming. Let's get the ideas. And one that meets the criteria that uh, that we've uh, that we've talked about.